Hi everybody, this is Cricket Lou, Chief DNS Architect at Infoblox, and I'm here for the second part of Core DNS Basics, where we're going to talk about a couple of important topics. Configuring Core DNS as a primary DNS server, which we'll do with the file statement, and also configuring a secondary DNS server on Core DNS using the secondary statement. And in between the two of those, we're going to show you how to mount a remote directory inside your container for convenience sake. Now, you may remember that in the last episode, we set up a container that was called core DNS slash demo. So let's go ahead and in the upper left window here, we are going to run core DNS slash demo. And down here in the lower right, we're going to figure out what the container ID is for core DNS slash demo and we are going to connect to it. So we'll do that with docker exec. We will specify the container ID and we're going to launch a shell within there. And if we look within this container, we'll see that we set up a core file and this core file looks like this. Uh, this is the last one that we saw as at the end of our last episode. But uh, this is just a recursive DNS server. It's not authoritative for anything, and Core DNS has the ability to act as a recursive DNS server and an authoritative DNS server simultaneously. So what I've done is within this container image, I've set up a uh, Core DNS, I'm sorry, it's not a Core DNS, it's an Etsy Core DNS subdirectory, and I've created a zone data file within it so that you didn't have to watch me create it. Uh, let's take a quick look at the contents of this zone data file. It's called db.foo.example. So it's probably a zone data file for the zone foo.example. And it's totally minimal. It has an SOA record uh, for foo.example pointing to the primary name server, uh, which is called faith.foo.example. Uh, it has some standard SOA fields. It has one NS record also pointing to faith.foo.example, and then just uh, an A record for www.foo.example pointing to the loopback address, just, just so that we can test it. So what we're going to do now within that core file is we are going to add, whoops, we need to be in the root directory. Within that core file, we are going to add a couple of statements. First, we are going to use the root statement and we are going to tell core DNS to look in Etsy core DNS for things like zone data files. And after that, within this root stanza up here in the upper left, we are going to add a file statement. And that file statement is going to designate the zone data file db.foo.example, because we specified the directory it's in, Etsy Core DNS, we don't need to specify that again, uh, as well as the name of the zone contained within that zone data file. Uh, Core DNS actually has the ability to load a given zone data file as many different zones. So check the documentation if you'd like to do that. But if you write uh, most of your owner names in relative fashion, that is without a trailing dot, you can load them repeatedly as different zone names. And for testing purposes, what we're going to do here is we're going to allow uh, transfers to just about every IP address. Now, normally you wouldn't do that on a production name server, but we want to be able to test whether or not this is set up correctly. So we're going to put that transfer to in there. Now let's drop out. Remember, we've got in the upper left, we've got logging going on as well as errors. So now if we signal our name server, which should be PID1, let's just uh, verify that it is. Sure enough, Core DNS is running, process ID1. If we then kill and send PI, uh, SIG user1 to PID1, we see reloading and reloading complete. Now, if we use the dig command down here in the lower right to send a zone transfer request for foo.example to the name server running at the loopback address, we should see the contents of the zone. And sure enough, there's the SOA record, the NS record, the A record, and then the SOA record again. Zone transfer format brackets 
the zone with the SOA record. The SOA record is at the beginning, the SOA record is at the end. If you look up here in the upper left, you'll see a message indicating that the name server saw and processed that AXFR query, that zone transfer query. So good, we've set it up as a primary name server for foo.example. In real life though, it's kind of a nuisance to have to manage that zone data file within the container. So what we'd probably do is something like this. In the lower left, you can see a window, and I've created a directory underneath my home directory on my Mac here, which is called CoreDNS. So this is outside of Docker entirely. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to populate that uh, with these uh, zone data files and as well as with the core file that I've created. So to do that, I'm going to use the Docker CP command and I'm going to grab that uh, etsy core dns db.foo.example file and copy it into uh, this directory. Looks like that succeeded. I'm also going to use the cp command and I'm going to grab the core file as well and I'm going to drop it into core dns. And if we look, there we go. We've got the core file, we've got db.foo.example in this new directory. Now, clearly, we're going to have to do something different in order to start core DNS and tell it to use this directory, to effectively mount this directory within the Docker container. So let's, uh, let's do that. In this upper left window, we're going to start that Docker container. And we're going to have to be careful because I can never remember the command line options right. But we're going to run uh, the Docker container, and we're going to hand it uh, first of all, the right settings for the resolver, and then with the dash V option, we're going to tell it to uh, grab the local core DNS directory and then to mount it as Etsy uh, core DNS. I think that's right, and then we need to specify. Uh, core DNS slash demo, which is the uh, <clears throat> name of the image that we want to start. And then finally, we're going to pass it one last command line option, which is dash conf, which is going to tell it instead of looking in the root of the file system for that core file, I want you to look in Etsy core DNS core file. Now, if I've done all that correctly, and I'm not at all confident that I have, but if I've done that all correctly, then it ought to start up and we ought to end up with a nice running DNS server. So let's see. Uh, we'll drop down to the lower right window, check the container ID for this new container that we have running. We'll use docker exec in order to connect to it. And what have we got here? If we look in Etsy core DNS, what do we see? Core file and db.foo.example. Perfect. So just as we had hoped. Now, if we can go over here, this is in the lower left, outside our Docker environment, just on the file system on my Mac, we're going to edit that core file. Now, this is the last uh, we saw of it. We'd added that file statement telling uh, CoreDNS that it's to act as a primary name server for uh, the foo.example zone. Let's now add a secondary statement. And the secondary statement is going to tell it to act as a secondary for nxdomain.com, which is my personal domain. And we're going to have to tell it to transfer from the address of my name server out there on the internet. And wouldn't you know it, I can't remember what that is, but luckily we can pop another window over here and we can look it up. It's called bigmo.nxdomain.com. Here's the IP address here, 23.239.20.199. We can add that there. So we'll transfer that from that IP address, and we'll allow transfers to anyone, again, uh, just for diagnostic purposes, not because we would necessarily do that in production. All right, so that looks just about right there. If we go back to the lower right window, let's just verify that that change we made in the core file is visible. Sure enough, it is. There's the secondary statement for nxdomain.com. 
check our process table. Looks like we've got PID 1 as usual. If we kill dash user 1 PID 1, you can see the information up here in the upper left. We've transferred nxdomain.com from 23.239.20.199 port 53 and reloading is complete. Now let's just make sure that we can actually do a zone transfer of nxdomain.com for diagnostic purposes from the local name server. Sure enough, there it is. And now you have the convenience of managing the configuration file and any zone data files that you need to create for your name server within this core DNS subdirectory on your normal file system. It's not within the container. If you make changes to it, you don't have to worry about committing that image uh, to uh, write a, a brand new image. So hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, look forward to joining me for the next Core DNS Basics episode. Thanks.